Good morning. It's a second episode of Horror B and B. It was going to be called Airbnb, but I'd like Horror B and B better. But let's talk about what really goes on. We're going to talk about all of the strange business practices, rental practices, renters, and properties that you will find if you decide to do business with that company. And yes, I'm aware that there are many people who have used them, especially for the more expensive houses uh, or properties, and had a, a very positive experience. But the, when you start going down the ladder to the cheaper properties, you find out that there's a lot of scummy places out there that people have found that this is a quick way that they can make some money feed their drug habit, get somebody to just rent it right away and uh, with a little bit of effort to fix it up so that it looks okay, they actually can rent out a property that nobody would ever live in. And today is uh, one of those. Now, it's about Liam in Ukaipa. It's very, very appropriate. Ukaipa, my money. But Liam is welcome to sue me. And welcome. I'm going to be saying a lot of very terrible things about Liam, but just remember that truth is the ultimate defense. So here's what happened. We'll get into this one. I don't like spending 25 minutes talking about what I'm going to tell you. So I'm going to tell you. So I needed to find a place for three days, and there's no ni- there's no nice places in the uh, area there, and that whole Ukaipa, Beaumont, Banning, it's all pretty much just trash. But he had a picture of his place, and it looked pretty nice to me. And it was a studio, and I'm going to say it was not in any way designated for disabled or suitable for disabled or anything like that. That does come into play later. But here's what really happened. So I rented it three days, two nights, looked at the picture, said that's nice. But I didn't get there until the evening time. It was actually already dark. And although the place had said that it was, I don't remember the term, but implied it was kind of a mixed neighborhood, kind of half cool crowd, half, no, it was a dangerous neighborhood. It was dark. It was extremely poorly lit. I guess that goes along with dark. I didn't see any police presence that I would consider uh, security and I saw all sorts of people with cars parked in their front lawn. Might have been temporary. I don't know. But just the type of people you say, that's somebody that I sure would not want to live next to. And I was thinking, I can't find this place. But the description was enticing. It said, look for the purple door. Well, I finally found it. It wasn't a purple door. It was a turquoise door. And I took a few minutes to find the code that they'd sent me earlier in the day and he seemed to get, this Liam character seemed to get kind of, you know, a little huffy about the fact that he had to send it twice. I mean, it's a lot of effort to send it twice, you know. You got to hit four different keys on your phone. You have to hit send. And uh, so I got it and I went in and it did look exactly like the picture as advertised and it smelled extremely good. And I wrote him a quick note saying I, I thought it smelled just great, and it did. And uh, and I noticed that that was because, very conspicuously, there was a Febreze aerosol spray. I said, well, that's odd. I don't keep one of those out on my kitchen table. It was I think it was underneath the kitchen table, actually, some, on a chair or something. But anyway, it was there. I said, well... Must get a lot of use out of it, huh? Well, we found out why. In about 30 minutes, the Febreze fell down. (laughs) And the place did smell just like shit. Now, that's not uncommon. This isn't the only place in the world that smells like shit. There are lots of hotels that, you know, I stayed in a Hampton uh, just end of June and every no every few hours there'd be a smell of shit roll through Uh, I stayed in another let's see which one was a Marriott I think it was in Indio and although most of the time it smelled clean and tidy 
you would get a wave of shit smell. And in case you don't know it, people, that's absolutely common. That is very, very common, especially in lower-priced properties. Surprise, surprise. And it can be fixed. It's not hard to fix. It costs a little bit of money. Not a lot. You don't have to spend a million dollars. But it does involve some plumbing work and somebody getting in and adjusting your your toilet's valve and its ability to let effuse go down and not yet not let uh, material go back through it the opposite direction. It's a lot of work. Uh, it's ugly work. Nobody wants to do it. And believe it, your plumber knows that and says he's going to charge you for the ugliness of the work. Well, their place smelled like shit just all the time. So... It comes in waves, which is normal. That's exactly how it, most places work. And it smelled like shit. I did not mention it to Liam. And now Liam had a picture of a person that was supposed to be him. And it looked like a business executive. I believe he had a, he had a dress shirt and I believe a tie on. Short hair. Looked like a real estate agent. Looked very reputable. That was one of the reasons why I, I rented this uh, flop house from him. <sighs> well, I was disappointed to see that there was no dishwasher. I had my own dishwasher in the trunk from my previous house, and I was taking it to my storage locker, but I brought it in, and I thought... Well, if the dishes mount up, I'll hook it up if I get Liam's permission, of course. I wouldn't hook it up without his permission. I never did hook it up. and uh, But it just sat on the floor. Or it sat on a stool, I think. And the, here's where things start going sour. So I go to sleep. Next morning, I wake up. And I notice that not my pillow, but the pillow next to mine has a strange brown edging to it. So I flop it over. What's on the back? And there is an oil stain of some sort of oil covering the entire pillow. The entire square of the pillow is covered with oil. And I pick it up and I threw it at a fly that was buzzing around the room. And I believe I hit the fly, but there the oil landed on the floor and I left it there. And uh, as I left, and that's a, another story, don't leave. As I left, the brown oil off the pillow had made a brown stain on the floor. But it gets way worse than that. Now remember, up to this point, I have not had a negative word with Liam, so there's no negative going back, none at all. But then, I believe it's about 11 a.m. in the morning at this time. I don't have the conversation in front of me, but I do have the conversation documented, and anyone who wants to see this to verify it can. Liam, sue me. If I'm lying, just sue me. And there in the sheet is a stain. A stain showing that a man had wiped his member and his genitals in the brown oil and then use the sheet to wipe it. So there is a stain of a man's genitals in the sheet. And I immediately plopped out of bed and took 10 pictures because I knew Liam would argue and say, no, it's not him. And that's because I've had problems with Airbnb twice before. Well, once before, once before. I've had problems twice, but only once was the owner a jerk. But I said, this is crazy. This is nuts. I'm getting out of here. And sent him a picture. And they have their usual, here's what you do when they catch your place. What you do is you immediately turn around and point and say it's their fault. And blame them. And that way you get out of trying, you, you, they, you try and get out of having to give them their money back. So he immediately said, well, I have to go because they had complaints about me. Now, they had no complaints about me. What complaint could they have had? It was me by myself in a little one square room. What could I have done? 
So I tried to ask him, but he was smart enough to say, I, I don't know, I didn't hear about you. So anyway, I stayed there, did some shopping. Uh, I forgot what I did for sheets, but I think I threw them on the ground and found some other ones. But anyway, tried to make the best of it till the next day when there's a knock at the door. And there's a knock at the door and I'm thinking, you know what, maybe they're here to fix the door because I'd noticed and I'd complained. No, I hadn't complained yet to Liam, but the door did not squarely fit the frame. And I thought, that's dangerous. That Anybody who's outside could stick one of those new cameras that's on a like a metal pole a little tiny camera through any of those frames, top, bottom, sides, and look into the room and not only film you if you're sleeping, but what if you're engaged in some conduct with a friend of yours that you don't want people watching at home on their TV or computer, or you don't want to see it on YouTube? Well, his door doesn't fit. And so I said, that's got to be called his attention because that's a security problem and so there's a knock at the door the next morning and I figured it's them or they're finally there. And I yelled something to him about, are you here to change the sheets, I hope? And they yelled, it's the sheriff. The sheriff. So the sheriff is there and there's a real weird looking squirrely guy who won't come in. He's hiding by the fence outside. And I go, what's the problem? And she goes, you have to go. And I go, what? Okay. <laughs> I, I said, first I said, why do I have to? And then I said, yeah, great. I'm out of here. So they were very nice. She helped me move out. And I said, oh, no, make me. That's great. So I told Liam, you have to reimburse me for all three nights. I'm not going to reimburse you. I have to throw you out. You're the one who made noise. And right in front of the sheriff, I said, who made the comments about the noise? I don't know their name. Where are they so we can talk to them? Oh, they're already gone. When did they leave? Oh, they left last night. What kind of noise did they hear? I don't know. So if you look at, if anybody wants to see the conversation between me and Liam, you'll see there is nothing negative until I tell him, you've got a fucking pervert in here. And it was probably him. Who else would use that place for some sort of sexual interlude with somebody, male or female, before I got there? Who could use it? Who would use it? Who would have access to a room and dirty up the sheets and hope I wouldn't see him? And then he turns around and tries to blame me. You must have done it. You're the one who did it. Well, if I did it, then why would I want to leave or get out? It wouldn't bother me. But no, I didn't. It would bother me a lot. I, I don't leave stains like that for people. And I don't engage in that kind of behavior. No one's ever accused me of such. And uh, he just continued to make up different allegations in any way to try and get out from paying. Now, the, I left out the most important thing. This person who actually turned out to be Liam looks nothing like the guy in the uh, picture. He actually had a phony picture. But when I mentioned that to Airbnb, they ignored it. And like, okay, yeah, thank you for letting us know that. Instead, you've got a guy who looks to me like a meth addict. Now, I can't say he is a meth addict. I don't have a drug test from him. But this guy looked to me, and uh, I'm hoping in court we'll have some nice pictures of him as he looked then, because he immediately, when I complained about him to Airbnb, they changed. <laughs> he changed his appearance. He went and got a haircut and a shave and everything. And but you, it doesn't matter. You can look at him and say this guy is not. Uh, this guy is not a Sunday school teacher. So he actually called the police on me and told me that he had to have me leave. I cannot fill in the blanks. I don't know if he said it was because of noise, or which would be a lie, or if it was, or if he said it was because of maybe not paying my rent, which of course would be a lie. I had to pay all three nights to get in there. But either way, it's a lie. And Liam, sue me if I'm not telling the truth. Just sue me. But just remember, truth is the ultimate defense. If I'm telling the truth. You're out of court with costs. It's called a slap suit. But we'll get into that another time. So uh, I've never been so embarrassed as to have somebody call the sheriff on me and say yeah, the sheriff had to have me move. But the sheriff made no report, no nothing. So it didn't come down. I wasn't arrested. I don't have a police record out of it. And uh, she was nice enough to help me move. 
she moved the dishwasher. Well, in my other previous two interludes with Horror B&B, just remember that they do have a practice that I have seen in two of the three problems I've had where the owner immediately tries to turn it around and claim that you're the bad one. Even though you've got a clear record that shows that everything was going fine until you complained, they try to jump and say, oh, no, 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 you are the problem. Because what they're trying to do is to get out of having to give you your money back, which I gave him a couple of opportunities to do. You can't, he said, well, I gave your money back for the day that you got thrown out. No, buddy, you can't keep the money for the time that you had me sleeping on a friggin' uh, silhouette of your Johnson that you made with with oil. And uh, somebody out there listening is saying, well, you don't know it was his. Good. Yeah, I know. I don't. That's just uh, an allegation. But I do know it was somebody's Johnson, and I showed it to the sheriff, and she was uh, horrified, but uh, just, you know part of business. So I moved out. He continued to lie. I went through at least 20 calls to horror B&B. And each time that you get the same response, you get an initial guy who says, okay, well, I'm doing, I'm not familiar with the case, but let me take some information and then I will turn it over. We do have a crew who's in charge of handling it and we will have them contact you back. And they do that, and then about three days back, you get a text saying, uh, we've looked into it, we're not going to return your call. So you don't get a call back. You don't get any investigation. You just get the buffer, the first people whose job it is to intercept your call and waste your time by again asking you all the same information. Okay, what what day did this happen? Where, where did this happen? Where, where did Cleese poke? Now, okay. And, okay, do you have the number of the... So you have to go all through it every time. And they're hoping, I mean, they're hoping that you're going to get frustrated and just walk away. I didn't get frustrated and walk away. I got frustrated and canceled the charge on my credit card. And I doubt, I doubt very highly if they're going to be able to go through Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo fights like the Dickens for you. And when I told Wells Fargo that they'd filed a phony police charge on me, and, uh, you know, they wanted details, but of course I haven't seen it. I don't know what he told the police. So I don't know what grounds he told them for me leaving, but I just know, God, uh, leaving, yes. <laughs> nothing could make me happier. But uh, and nothing did make me happier. I got out of that little creepy, you know, l- oh, God. It was so dangerous that... Most people will not have this. The front, the door, there's no front door. The door goes from the driveway, in other words, from your car, the front of your car, into the one room. Well, isn't there like an entranceway where you walk in and you're green? No, there's nothing. It's what it is, is obviously, now that I think about it, a converted garage. It's just a garage that he converted and tried to turn. I don't know if he converted, somebody else might have. And is trying to turn it into a source of quick cash, which is what most, most of these horror B&B places are. So, um, my, my bank has not uh, contacted me yet. They did immediately took the charge off. And said uh, it'll be about forty-five days, but I, my, I, there, I don't think they're ever going to uh, allow the charge to be switched back, so he gets his money back. But I do know that when they do that, it's immediately taken out of his account if he has it, which he doesn't look like he does. So I would say, do you want my advice? If you're thinking of going to Ukaipa, and he does Kaipa, so he he did. I can show you. Everything was fine until I told him that the place was filthy. And then all of a sudden, oh, you're the trouble. I hate you. You're, you've always been trouble. <laughs> it's, oh, God, I, I hate it when they do that. But unfortunately, if you're going to deal with horror B&B, you should expect that. That, unfortunately, is their par for the course for how they field complaints. In my experience... Uh, the last two complaints I've had with them, 
they both times immediately said, oh no, you're the problem. When, of course, I've never been a problem for anybody. So, uh, well, I mean, not like that. I don't wipe my private parts in oil on sheets. And the time before that, oh, we'll save it for next episode. But I rented a nice place that was supposed to be beachside that you could sit out on the deck and watch the ocean and instead you could sit out on the back porch and watch the crack house next door people going in and out of the windows and uh there it was no closer to the beach than it was to the freeway uh, the the nearest thing you had to the beach was uh, a Beach Boys album inside my car, which was parked three blocks over because there was no parking. So that's my next story. And if you have one down below where it says comments, let me know your story. What happened to you? Did you rent from Horror b and Did you have a bad time or a good time? Let us know. And again, if you could just give me a thumbs up so that the algorithm places me at the top of the stack (laughs) and a thumbs up and a like, that's a thumbs up, wait a minute, and a subscribe so you know that when we have the next episode, next episode we're going to have a guest who stayed at an expensive B&B in Calabasas and, oh boy, so... Just let us know if there's anything in particular you'd like us to hear. I'm Glenn. Thanks for listening, and I will see you next week.